Hi, I'm Erica Gamet, and for today's video, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about Apple Keynote. So Keynote is Apple's presentation software. So it's sort of along the lines of Microsoft PowerPoint. And once you get that idea into your head, I want to let it sit for a second and then put it out of your head because I think it's nothing like PowerPoint at all. I think that what it can do is above and beyond. As a creative, I use it for visual storytelling of different kinds. I use it for animations, interactive kiosks, and also exporting it as a self-running uh, demo movie that you can maybe put into a trade show booth, something along those lines. For today's video, I'm gonna talk about one transition, and that's the transition known as Magic Move. So let's go ahead and just jump right over into Keynote and check it out. In today's video, we're going to look at a transition effect called Magic Move. And it is a transition. Transitions in Keynote happen between slides. And when you put a transition on a slide, you put it on the outgoing slide. So there are builds, which we apply to individual objects on the slide, and transitions, which are sort of animations that happen between two slides. So the transition I want to talk about today is called Magic Move. And it's kind of cool because it morphs an object on one slide onto an object on another slide. So I'm just going to show you an example and then show you how uh, we build that and then just uh, go over a couple other examples where you might use that. So on this first slide here, I have just a blue rectangle. Now what you have to have, and it will tell you this, actually it'll come up with a, um, a little dialogue that will tell you this um, until you decide to clear it, that you have to have the same object on, two, on the two different slides that you're transitioning between, um, but then, then you make changes to the item on the other page. So for instance, I have this uh, blue rectangle. On my second slide, I have the same blue rectangle, but I've made it larger and I've moved where it sits. So basically, when I put this together, I take the object and put it on the first slide, and then I just copy it, Command or Control C, to copy that, and then I go to the next slide and um, paste it there, and then make whatever changes I need to with that. I'm going to go back to that first slide, and I'm going to tell it that I now want to transition this magic move transition that's here. So let's actually, um, first I want to look at it and see what that does. So I'm just going to hit play, and we see our blue rectangle, and when I hit uh, the advance, it morphs onto that next slide. Now, you might think, why didn't I use um, an animation for that? Uh, why didn't I use a build? Well, I, I totally could. I could use the, um, the animation and just put it on one slide and uh, come in here and give it an action. So I can come over here and say, let's give it an action and make it larger and move where it sits. That would be perfectly fine if this is all I had. When I use the magic move is when I have several items that I need to have constantly changing. So if I had other objects on this slide, if I put them all on the same slide and used an animation and I have eight different things that I want to keep changing as well, um, other elements, I'd have to have those stacked all on that slide. And so for me, sometimes using a transition going to a whole clean slide works better. And in some of the examples I'll cover in just a minute, you'll see where uh, choosing the transition, the magic move transition, is better than doing an action on the individual slide. So, okay, so how do we do this? We go to the first slide, I copy this item, I paste it on this second slide here. Go back to the first slide because again, the transition is applied to the outgoing slide. And with nothing selected, I want to come over here to animate. And when I do that, it's going to automatically know that you need transitions. If I have an item selected, the animate changes and thinks that it's animating the particular object. So click off of it, transitions. So I'm going to come in here. And if I have nothing selected at all, let's say it's back to none, it will say add an effect. We're going to add an effect and I'm going to choose magic move. And now I can see what happened. It automatically gave me a preview of that. So I tell it, great, I want it to last a certain duration. So we can come in here and just tell it a duration. How long does that uh, transition between those two slides uh, last? I'm going to leave fade unmatched objects just turned on for a moment. We'll look at that in the different uh, samples, how that works. And again, we can start our transition either on a click or have it automatically. So if you're doing a self-running demo, you might want to go ahead and build in the timing and say, automatically after everything on the page finishes building uh, uh, half a second after that. If you are doing the automatic transitions, 
and builds, you want to click on build order down here at the bottom and actually be able to tell it in what order everything happens. But I'm actually going to hit, go ahead and just leave that as on click so I can manually advance that as I need it. So again, that's an easy morph. I just put a uh, selection here and I have the same item here. Let's just go ahead and make a slight change to it and go ahead and replay that. When I click, it changes the size and the location. That's the magic move. Let's look at another uh, sample. So in this sample, I just have a placed logo. It's just a placed PNG file. And on the next slide is actually, so for me, this is something I might do in a, in a business presentation. I might have the first slide say, okay, this is you know my presentation, this is my branding, here it is. Now I'd like that branding to appear on every slide, but I'd like it smaller. So on the next slide, I would copy this, come over to this next slide, and paste it down here. Those are the two items that it's going to morph between. I also added an item here. And I have done a little build in, I've told it to dissolve in, and I've told it for it to automatically come in after the transition. So once that transition is done and the morphing has happened, then this uh, title will show up here. This title that says creating the layout will show up on the, um, on the slide. So let's go back to that first one, the outgoing slide, and look, and I just said tell it two seconds. Again, I left it by object, fade unmatched objects, and just said to automatically do it on click. And that's what happens there. But if you notice, I also have a transition over on this slide as well, because I have a third slide in this transition. And again, I could do all this on one slide if I wanted to, but um, I'm, as we're, we're gonna see in a second, I have so many items, they would all be stacked on top of each other on the slide and hard to kind of figure out what it is I need to select next. It just is easier sometimes to keep everything on separate slides. All right, so we've got this second one that just came in, and now I want to go ahead and morph something else. I copy this creating the layout text frame, and I'm going to paste it here. So this is the same one, just pasted, and I made it smaller and moved it to the top. I also have this item, which is no longer morphing. I just went ahead and pasted it. It's not morphing to anything. Even if it were to morph, you can see that it's in exactly the same spot, so it really doesn't matter. All right, so I've copied this pasted it at the top, made it smaller. I've also built in a line that has a little wipe action going here so I can preview that. And then I also have this paragraph here where I just have three different items and I have each line building in as it is. So let's look at what happens with that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And I have everything set up to do this automatically once I hit the first, um, the first transition. So I'm gonna hit transition. It's gonna take that logo and it's gonna move it down to the side. And then there's my title that shows up for this next slide or piece that I'll be talking about. And I say, great, now we're going to talk about creating the layout. Um, and then in the next slide, when I hit advance, that title moves up, becomes a little smaller, adds a line, and my bullet points uh, come onto the screen. So I morphed, I used the, um, the magic move to move the title creating the layout from the center to the top. All right, so far we've just taken an item and we've changed its position and its size. But one of the other things you can do is you can actually have it change uh, text or to uh, or the uh, look of the text. In this case, I'm just gonna have it change font for me. So I'm gonna hit play. This is the best text ever. I'm gonna hit my advance and it changes. So I changed the location, the size, and I also changed the font. So let's actually look at that. Watch it morph from one font to the other. So it's kind of cool. Sometimes the results are a little less than spectacular, but it looks pretty cool. And that's actually taking the same text. Again, I just copied it from here and I pasted it onto this uh, next slide, went back to the first slide, and set this um, morphing. Now I told it to change by character. Sometimes it may or may not make a difference. Let's change, tell it to change by object. And that sometimes just gives us a, a strange fade. So let's just try that. And actually it changed because I was changing the font, so it actually looks pretty good. Um, but again, sometimes when you've got words, it may or may not make sense to change these. And actually we're gonna look at that in this next one. I've got this item here. This is the best text ever. And I've got the magic morph applied to that. And I come over here and it says, or is this the best text? So now the text has actually changed. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. So it goes from this 
to this here. Now it just faded, so that could be just a fade. We could have just done a dissolve. That's basically what we ended up with. So let's change that on this first item here. This is the best text ever. And again, we don't want to select the item. We just want to be on the, on the slide. Select this slide, and then we want to tell it instead, let's change it by word and see what happens. So we'll hit play. And now everything that was common moves over and then the other stuff moves in. I can do the same thing if we come back to this slide and instead say do it by character. Let's look at that. And items rearranged to fill in. All right, so we have some options there as well. We can also, if we don't have fade unmatched objects turn on, let's look at that. So it doesn't fade it, it was a little more um, abrupt, as you can see, instead of fading it, and so you kind of have this morph going on in the background, it's sort of like it removed the text and then threw in the new text. I tend to keep the fade on most of the time, that is the default anyway, it just tends to work uh, a lot better. And I'll just show you one last one here, use of magic move. So in this case, I have this arrow that I want to follow down through my bullet points. Now I totally could do this on one slide again, but for me, what I'm doing is I'm having each bullet point that's being highlighted is also in color, while the rest of them will remain in black. So for me, if I have this item, and then we go to this item, and this item, to have that all on one slide and have those colors changing, I would have to have individual objects sitting on top of each other in exactly the same place. So I'd have to maintain those three separate ones, and also they would have to um, sit on top of each other and trying to change the color is going to be difficult. Um, but basically I just want the arrow to move down and uh, show each bullet point that's there that's highlighted. All right, so we'll do that. I'm gonna hit play, and we'll see what that looks like. And you notice it faded from black to orange. I'm sorry, from orange to black, and then point number two will fade from orange to black as well as the next one comes in. So how did we do that? I set a magic move transition on this first slide, and I've told it not to fade the unmatched objects, and that, if I have the fade turned on, sometimes it looks a little different, fades a little bit differently, and it's a little jumpier sometimes as well. And again, depending on if you've told it to do it by character, by object, by word, let's do by word, because that really stands out differently. So when I do that, not quite what I was looking for, and it's not fading, so it's kind of jumpy, and the color is a little different as well. So again, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna tell it, fade the unmatched objects, do it by character, and do the same thing here. So that's magic move. You basically have to have an item on the two different slides, make changes to it on the second slide, set the transition, the magic move transition, on the first slide. So um, yeah, play with it and see what sort of effects you can come up with. And again, for me, sometimes I think I need to do it as a magic move, as a transition between the slides, and sometimes you can get the same effect by doing a build on the slide itself. So you have a lot of options, and this is just one way of doing a magic move transition. That was Magic Move in Apple Keynote. If there are other Keynote topics you'd like me to cover or other topics in general you'd like me to cover, just leave me a comment in the comment section below. You can also hit me up on social media. I am at Erica Gamut on Twitter and Instagram. Use the hashtag learnwithErica uh, wherever you contact me. I also have a new Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash learnwithErica. If you like this video, be sure to click like and also be sure to subscribe. I put videos up every Wednesday, but if you're subscribed, you'll also get a notification of that and know when I've actually uh, put, posted those up online. So that's it for now, and until next time, bye-bye.